<laughs> yes. <laughs> that that's a big one. You got playoff in case you got Oklahoma at Baylor. So. Well, Steve always watches the Michigan game. Yeah, so yeah. That, let me tell you something. That's I tell you every every Saturday. You know, you guys ask me to come out and do something. I'm like, man, I'm watching my game. If it's on a different day, I'm watching my game. But don't don't call me during my game. <laughs> Michigan at Indiana. Oh, is it a basketball game? <laughs> no, you know, believe it or not, let, let's put that aside. Uh, Indiana is not a bad program, and. uh the thing about they they've had a pretty good offense the last couple of years. The problem with Indiana was always their defense, and uh, don't and don't get it twisted. Indiana can put up some points, and they're pretty quick. So I mean, it's it's going to be a tough one. But I, I, you know, Michigan, I think you know they're going to win. I mean, I see them winning out when it until they get to uh, get to Ohio on November twenty eighth, and uh, make Urban Meyer gets to come in there and we get to defense him and dance all over the sideline they're on and. When they win the game, uh, <laughs> look forward to, I'm also going to look forward to Maryland beating uh, Michigan State. You so. said Ohio State. You shouldn't have said that. That's shame on you. <laughs> shame on you for saying that. Um, yeah, Michigan's running fast. Except they don't got no. I mean, uh, Indiana's running fast. They don't got no point guard up. <laughs> you know, you know another, another good game is going to want to be. I think uh, is going to be uh, Alabama Mississippi State. That's going to be a pretty game to game. I'm, I, th- that's the one I'm most intrigued with is Alabama Mississippi State. I'm really intrigued by that matchup. I think Indiana. I think Mississippi. Now I'm back to Indiana. My God, I'm on basketball mode. I think Mississippi State can beat them. Mississippi State has the quarterback to beat them. Oh, Dak yeah. Prescott is having that another slow winding. Methodical yeah. year and he's he's good. Solid, huh? Yep. Hey, what do you think about uh, Utah Arizona? That's gonna be a good oh, one. That's gonna be another, one another good day. Yeah. I'm needing upsets because I just want some of these teams to lose just so we can get out of here. I'm hoping Oregon beats Stanford, which is a long, long trotting road to <laughs> hopefully wish on. <laughs> no, another one I'm looking at North Carolina State against Florida State. I think North Carolina. State, oh yeah, they I think North Carolina. Tell. I think North Carolina State can beat. And Florida State's going back to Everett Golson oh, again man. at quarterback. So Florida State again. When you have two quarterbacks, you have none. So <laughs> they're going back to turnover machine. Uh, it, it, I I don't know. North Carolina State can easily beat Florida State again. Then the FSU fans will start putting their Florida shirts on. Steve, question. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Steve, question. Uh, the Michigan State. I know you saw that uh, game. I'm sure you probably decided there. Did you drink some tea last last week weekend watching uh, that game? Chilling with Kermit and Frog. I was sipping on tea, uh, saying that was a great catch. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what they saw. I'm looking at the game, going, "How the hell did they not call that man being out of bounds?" Uh, listen, you know we could talk about bad plays, and they all scream it was a bad bad play, but, you know, we'll go back and watch Michigan, Michigan State, and let me tell you, that was the worst officiated game I'd, I'd seen in a long time, yet they fought through it and still led the entire game, and it, it's a shame it came down to a mistake on a punt, right. you know, but we know, but that was a bad missed call game, and then for them, how they act now, it's like, you know, oh, it's a bad call, well, okay, well, now you know how we feel, okay, so take your medicine, just move on to the next game. 13 and 14, right there, Michigan State and Michigan. The dude. <laughs> the dude. Hey, just win. That's all I got to say, just win. The dude was yeah, out. That's <laughs> North Carolina jumped up in the uh... – Yeah, North Carolina playing really good ball after the week one loss to South Carolina, which uh-huh. now you're looking at it, you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, North Carolina playing really good football, not basketball. They're playing really good football. Yeah. And they go up against the Miami team who's just – Abysmal. It's because now Miami used to be able to recruit Miami. Now all those kids are going to Florida and Florida State. <laughs> so now yeah. Miami Miami can't keep their own, and that's what's killing Miami. Hey, Daryl, um, what do you think will be the keys to victory for, for, for Baylor to beat Oklahoma this weekend? This is this for me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 What, do you, what do you think will be the keys to victory for Baylor to beat Oklahoma this weekend? Uh, play fast. Uh, yeah. Keep doing what they've been doing. Uh, get the quarterback in the rhythm. Don't put it, put the whole game on the quarterback. Uh, rely on the run game and have a good offensive line and a good running back. So uh, I'd say rely on the running back, play fast, and uh, get Corey the ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, that that that's going to be one of them games. that's going to be in the in the in the in the forties. Yeah, right. that's gonna be a great game when it's all said and done. The ball. Now, if you like video games. 
It's a great game to yeah, watch. The first one, the forty, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a. Oh, people always get on me and everything. I'm an old-fashioned football guy. I like watching. I like watching points get scored, but I don't like it when they go back and forth and the game ends up seventy to like. Like I put it for example, the Saints Giants game the other weekend. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? I was like, are the guys on the defensive side of the ball even get paid to tackle anyone? Because no one in that whole game tackled anyone. But I liken it to fantasy football and everything has turned everything around to where everybody likes offense. Yeah. I'm a defensive guy. I'm a defense guy. I love watching two really good defenses just pound each other or pound the yeah. offenses on the other side and just watch it go back and forth that way. I like a lower scoring game, but this this Baylor Oklahoma game it's gonna be like watching two guys with controllers in, in on each sideline just going up. fire away, boom! Just a game slide. Fire away! <laughs> we, everybody's hitting hail mary and just throwing it. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a, yeah, it's gonna be a. Oh, it's going it's gonna be a shootout. It's it's gonna be a shootout. And people are like, well, you had Steve Spurrier as your coach and everything. You liked it. I'm like, yes, but our defense was also good, too. I was like, don't take nothing away from those Florida teams. Their defense was really good, and you had Steve running God knows what to people that God knows who, and it, it, it was crazy. Oh, man. Think of beauty, huh? I love I, I, I just I like good football games. I like really good football games, and this one should be a really good football game when you like scoring. Yes. Other games should be really good football games where you like defense. Oh yeah. So you, we'll, we'll get our happy medium <laughs> between all the games, all the games this weekend. Oh yeah. All right. Well, before we go to break, y'all got it. Y'all want to ask any more questions to uh, Mr. Daryl Stoneham, or are we good here? Yeah, actually, I want to ask him. Uh... Course, I'm going to go to ask a Michigan question. I would, would have never guessed. Would have never guessed it. Right? I would have you know, never you know, guessed. Hey, what do you What do you think about the hiring of Jim Harbaugh? Everybody loved that. What do you think about the hiring of Harbaugh? Yeah, the, you, like, you like the Harbaugh hire? Oh yeah, that was that was the best hire <laughs> yeah, for the team right now. Um, Mr. Harbaugh is, I think, is a really good coach. I had the pleasure of meeting with him a couple of times when I was in all season when I was you know training with the. But some of the other guys there uh, got to uh, see him a little bit. He's a very hands-on, very active coach. I know you guys see him on the sideline with his cleats on. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And his uh, one-offs have been pretty good, too. That's how he practices. He's out there. Yeah. Right. So he'll, he'll show a player what to do and then instead of coaching or teaching him what to do. He'll, he'll show you what to do, which makes it a lot easier to learn and uh, makes the players relate to him a lot better. It, br- it brings the player-coach player connection a lot closer. Now, I know the coaching style with Harbaugh is uh, totally different from what uh, Rodriguez was. What was um, – how was Coach Rodriguez whenever uh, his coaching style was? Was he good – was he good uh, – uh, was he great to cook? Was he a great coach to learn from and, you know? Well, well both coaches were, were complete different systems but um, and complete different coaching methods. Uh, I've only got a chance to see how, a little bit how Coach Harbaugh coaches, but uh, – uh, Coach Rod, um, his coaching methods may have rubbed some of the players the wrong way. Uh, mm-hmm. Coming from Coach Carr to Coach Rod was a big transition yeah. for for a lot of guys. But um, I mean, he's a winning coach. Uh, he's he's a proven winner at West Virginia. I know he didn't have the the best uh, luck at Michigan, but uh, he's, he's been doing pretty good at Arizona as well. So I think he's a great coach. He may not have fit at Michigan the way everyone would have hoped, even myself. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, he's still a great coach. But uh, both coaches are really good, both, uh, both equally good in what they do. Yeah, I always felt like when Rodriguez was hired, I felt it was a great hire. It was uh, unfortunate that he it was kind of fitting a round peg into a square hole or, or a square peg into a round hole. And right. it was, um, you know, I don't think he was really given the, the greatest of opportunity. But he brought a lot of great players into the program. And people, a lot of fans, a lot of fans, a lot of fans don't really realize that all the, uh, the the players they brought in there who were top notch players and great character players, and uh, you know as yourself and, they, and you know it transitioned over to whenever Brady Hope came in and it was those same guys that Coach Rod brought in, and you know it wasn't like they were lacking in talent. You know obviously Coach Rod right. saw the talent and believed in his players, so 
I always thought he was a great coach and just maybe he, I always thought maybe he needed one more year to show, hey, this system can work. So, I mean, that, that was my, what I, my take on Rodriguez. And it was unfortunate, but, you know, it's, I'm glad he's succeeding now, you know. Right. And my, my thing is I, I just didn't uh, – the, the way they used Denard, uh, it was great for the first half of the season. Uh, we we mm-hmm. always go 5-0. and But once you get into the meat of the big schedules and Notre Dame, um, uh, the – the Ohio States, the Michigan States, oh, the Wisconsin's, you see our yeah. score drastically, you know, go down. But um, I think they used, they underused the Nord a lot uh, and underestimated his, his throwing abilities. I know it wasn't that great. I mean, he may, may have gotten himself in a little bit of interception trouble, but um, uh, he's a much better passer than a lot, a lot of people a get lot of people credit for. Yeah. yeah. He's a, and uh, when you had guys as tall as myself and, you know, Junior Hemingway and Roy Roundtree, I, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it over the years. All you have to do is at least just give us a chance. So, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. Throw yeah, it so, up. <laughs> yeah, so if we'd have gotten more chances like those, uh, I think we'd have been a lot more successful instead of running on on the yeah. untied shoelaces of shoelace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He ties them now. Uh, that's, that's great. Yeah, they make they make him time now. Yeah, yeah, they make yeah, yeah. They, they they can make you do anything in the NFL. Yeah, they 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 don't they, they, just, <laughs> they, 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 they them for it. <laughs> it's, it's the title shoe is to get a fifteen thousand dollar fine. Good so, God, yeah, you, you take your pick. I'd be tying. <laughs> yeah, I'd be double. I'd be double knotting them bad boys. Oh yeah. Be like, don't come oh, untie. Yeah. My, well, my knee pads never came close to my knees. So, <laughs> uh, I got fined. I got fined for for not having. My knees covered and having them exposed, and then I got fined another time because I got tackled and they pulled my socks down and I didn't pull them back up. So. <laughs> <laughs> what this? But the, oh, my I, goodness, I know we're going off on this one, but this is what makes me mad about the NFL. You got guys that are putting wearing eye black that says Ironhead on it for their father, Craig Ironhead Hayward, who lost his battle with cancer and passed away, so his son wears Ironhead. Under his eye black, he gets fined for that. D'Angelo Williams tries to wear pink all year long because right. his mama died of breast cancer. He gets fined for that. Right. Somebody just the other day had God bless the troops written on their shoes. He got fined for that. The NFL needs to come to grips with themselves yeah. that these guys should be able to do this, especially if they're wearing licensed merchandise that is by the NFL. And it's by your yeah. subsidiaries. Like, they tried to find Marshawn Lynch from wearing a Beast Mode hat. Well, once they found out who made his Beast Mode hat, they said it was okay because New Era made his hat. <laughs> so once it's a corporate thing, it comes down to it. But come on, NFL, you got to lighten up. These guys are doing things for the right reasons. You don't find J.J. Yeah. Watt because he looks like freaking one of the Road Warriors because all his eye black's going halfway down his face. You've got more things to worry about than what a guy puts on his shoes and wears on his eye black and wears underneath his jersey because his mom died of breast cancer. Worry about these idiots that were out there beating women and you're still letting them play football. Worry about those type of things and stop worrying about guys wearing their socks too low or their knee pads too high or not wearing nothing at all. You should be mad because you're letting them wear all them damn solid color jerseys on Thursday night. That's what you should be pissed off about. Because them, oh, yeah, them shits is ugly. But I'm just, I'm just saying, they've got, they've got so much more stuff they should be worried about than worried about guys trying to salute the troops, their mom, their dad, whatever. Worry about the off-the-field crap and stop worrying about just because a guy writes a little note on his cleats. Stop worrying about it. Be done with that the finding. NFL, it's ridiculous. The NFL wants to get rid of any gray areas that they have. So if they if they allow some guy saying uh, we support our troops to wear the eye black and write that on his eyes, then what if another guy wants to support somebody that he feels like he should support but is not a, a good person to support? Like what if that person did something wrong or it's one of his boys that got shot? And, you know, well, I'm not saying too, so. I'm not saying have a shirt that says free nuck nuck. <laughs> Yeah. Or free. Or that's, that's why they do it because they don't. Uh, they don't want any discussion about it. So they would say we're not going to allow any of it for anything. No but Darryl, discussion, no debate, which yeah. makes it no fun. But that's but Daryl, when you're having a thing that's called, uh, it's on your field. It says salute 
to service on your